Hi, everybody. I'm Al Rochelle, and thank you for joining us again as we continue our discussions about dysautonomias. And we're specifically going to talk about syncopes. What exactly are they? Joining me right now is Dr. Satish Raj. Doctor, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for having me. Hey, let's talk about your qualifications a little bit, where you came from, and how you're involved with all this stuff with uh, autonomic problems. Sure. So I'm, I'm trained actually as a cardiologist and a, specifically a heart rhythm specialist. So I put in pacemakers and defibrillators and things like that in my spare time. Uh -huh. um, and I am Canadian trained. I'm a Canadian by birth. And after I did that, I actually came down to Vanderbilt University in, in Nashville to get some research training. And I worked with Professor David Robertson down there in the Autonomic Dysfunction Center. And while there, I got exposed to a variety of autonomic disorders, including those with tachycardia like POTS. Uh, I already did a fair bit of the fainting stuff, the reflex fainting that I think we want to discuss. So the syncopies, right, yeah. And then some of the orthostatic hypotension. Yeah. Um, I was supposed to go down there just for two years of training and go back, but, uh, you know, Nashville was seductive, and I <laughs> stayed for 12 years and, and we just moved back to Calgary about five years ago. When we talk about syncopes, fainting basically is what that is. Tell me about the different ways that a person can faint and then what's it's called. Fainting is one of those disorders that is very common, um, and can be due to different things. And some are benign, some are relatively harmless and won't kill you in the long run, but there are other causes that are life-threatening. So one of the big challenges is to find out which. The most common forms of fainting across all ages, almost exclusively in the young, but certainly as we get older it's true as well, are reflex faints. Um, and these go by a whole potpourri of names. Mm -hmm. People often call them VVS or vasovagal syncope. Some people refer to them as neurocardiogenic syncope, or NCS. Some people refer to them as reflex syncopes. And more recently, I have colleagues referring to them as AMS, or autonomically mediated syncopes. What these all have in common is that there is a nervous system reflex that is sensing something's wrong with the heart that then suddenly sends a signal down to either decrease the heart rate or to drop blood vessel tone that then drops blood pressure mm -hmm. and causes someone to not get enough blood to their brain and, and pass out. The nice thing, if you want to put it that way, is that this is a self-correcting mechanism because these usually occur when one is standing up. When one faints, one stops standing up. One usually comes, falls to the ground, hopefully in a controlled way. Blood comes back to the heart, and the whole reflex reverses, often in several minutes. Um, and then people wake up, and they may feel a little tired and symptomatic for a few minutes, but then are able to get on with things. So uh, with all of these titles, I think what we're getting at in this is this has got to be confusing the patients because some of these symptoms seem to be so similar that you wonder if there wasn't a phrase that would describe all of them or does it need to be so specific that you have identified in the name what the symptoms are? I think the, the issue is that um, I mean the most important thing for the patient obviously is have they fainted or not. Okay. Um, and then I think most of the headings that you have can be put under the grab bag of a reflex faint. So I don't use the term RS, but uh, the term RS would do. Right. But this is what autonomically mediated syncope or AMS, this is what neurocardiogenic syncope is trying to say this is due to a cardiovascular reflex. And that's really the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And the reason that's most important is that that eliminates other more dangerous, life-threatening causes of syncope. So the problem with syncope is that it's, a, it's an end result. It's a common, fairly common symptom. Um, but the causes can be very varied going right. into it. And it ranges from the benign. And by benign, I don't mean not bothersome or life-altering, but not life-threatening. And that's these disorders we're talking about. They're not going to progress to something that'll kill you. But range from that to heart rhythm problems that, you know, you go out and if it stops and you wake up, then it's called a faint because you woke up by yourself. If it doesn't stop, then you could have what's called sudden cardiac death, right? So obviously you want to take a more aggressive posture and you may have different treatments mm -hmm. for that group. And one of the key treatments for the disorders that we've, we're speaking about, the reflex faints, is really to explain to the patient that they're not going to die from this, that they're not going to have a heart attack because of this. They're not going to live less long because of this. Yeah. Regardless of what you want to call it, that's probably one of the key messages.